The horrible march forward of Operation Choke Point 2.0 continues, and if you watch this channel, its latest victim will be very unsurprising to you. Turns out CZ has pled guilty to felony charges. Binance has pled guilty to felony charges. And it also turns out that that famous, now famous, number four hand sign that CZ has been consistently giving in virtually every single photograph taken of him, that's roughly equivalent to the number of billions of dollars that Binance will be paying to the US federal government. Also, a mystery has been solved. The mystery was, how did Kraken get off so easily with its measly $30 million in fines to settle it, the staking charges against it when both Binance and Coinbase saw these massive complaints from the SEC alleging that they were trading what the SEC believes are crypto securities. Turns out they did not get off the hook and Kraken has now seen the exact same kind of complaint involving a lot of the same tokens. If you were completely unsurprised by the news that CZ will probably be doing a federal felony bid, or if you're finding value in these videos, please consider delegating to the Army of Spies stake pool, ticker AOS. Well, this is what we got to see today. Your first question is probably, what is this? This is a joint press conference between the Department of Justice, Treasury, CFTC, a bunch of U.S. attorneys who are basically the prosecutors. They're all here because they've been doing something for the last three years that will be absolutely no surprise if you follow this channel. And that has been investigating Binance. So you'll probably remember, we talked about all the evidence that came out when the SEC filed their action against Binance. They sort of, they sort of opened the trench coat a little bit and showed off some of what were some of what was obviously the evidence that would feature in a criminal a criminal action that was probably already ongoing uh, versus Binance. And it turned out today that was indeed the case. We saw in that in that SEC filing, there was very derogatory um, evidence. Uh, the probably the best example were some of the internal chat communications between Binance employees, it made it very obvious that Binance knew they were violating sanctions. They were also violating anti-money money laundering laws and also money transmitter laws, all of which featured in the criminal, criminal action we saw today. So this has been a gigantic joint investigation. The SEC was in on it for their civil action. The CFTC was in on it for their civil action. The DOJ was in on it for their criminal action. And of course, Treasury. So you might also be asking, why are so many people's eyes closed in this, this still from the video that the Department of Justice released? First of all, because they've been working on this for three years and none of this is a surprise to them. This is just them closing the chat closing the book on this chapter of their lives, this three-year investigation into Binance, and also because Yellen kept pronouncing Binance as Binance. Yes, Janet Yellen thinks Binance is called Binance. The funniest part is she actually called it Binance once and quickly corrected herself and started calling it Binance again. Yes, Janet Yellen has spent the last three years on a crusade against an exchange that she thought was called Binance. This is the actual press release from the Department of Justice. And what actually happened today was CZ showed up in federal court in Seattle and actually registered the guilty pleas on behalf of himself and Binance. Uh, Commissioner Benham of the CFTC also announced that Samuel Lin, who is the chief compliance officer of Binance, he uh, resolved the CFTC charges against himself, which means he will be paying a fine. And this $4.3 billion fine, it's sort of a combination of fines and 
Binance giving the US government a bunch of the fees it received from its users, its American users during the times of these violations of the Bank Secrecy Act, the money transmitter laws, and the International Emergency Economic Powers Act. So it's it, there are different components in that 4.3 billion. The total sum though was this 4.3 billion dollar figure, which is one of the largest penalties ever for a corporate entity in a criminal matter. So of all of the times that the FBI has investigated a corporation, all of those investigations, this is one of the largest penalties ever. And this is actually the largest enforcement action in the history of the Treasury Department. And it's very telling. It was announced by Yellen that during the entire time Binance was in operation, they never filed a single suspicious activity report. We've talked before in the past about how uh, anti-money laundering uh, compliance programs work. You have to go through and flag suspicious, uh, specific, uh, specific, uh, suspicious transactions. And then you file a suspicious activity report with FinCEN so they can decide, you know, what they actually want to investigate. Binance never filed a single one of those, which would be extremely bizarre and impossible for, uh, for, uh, a corporate type entity doing that many transactions. So I, I think that alone should have been a sign to Binance that they were probably going in the wrong direction as far as keeping CZ out of jail. And what we know is that CZ was sort of uh, released on bail. It was quite a, quite a high bail, but you probably already know the way this works. You don't actually have to put up the full amount in a lot of cases. We've seen this uh, with Sam Bankman Freed. You can often put up, you know, just a tiny piece of the total bill, and then you might have guarantors who put up a little bit of money, but are sort of guaranteeing the rest of the bill if you if you flee. And of course, CZ could have just laid low in say dubai or somewhere else that didn't have an extradition treaty with the us he could have just stayed somewhere you know stayed in countries that didn't have extradition treaties uh with the united states and sort of you know ducked to this thing forever he could have just kind of kept running binance forever but it seems like the life of a of an international uh fugitive is not a good life and i think cz he's managed to make a ton of money and he probably would prefer to just make his penance now and live out the rest of his life without having to look over his shoulder or worried about, you know, US federal law enforcement officers officers snagging him if he dared, you know, leave the confines of non-extradition treaty countries. And also I think there's and so I mean CZ kind of did kind of did I think crypto a solid by facing up to this and letting us move on because I think all of us have known that this was coming for a long time. Binance I think it's fair to argue, some people would debate this, but it's fair to argue that the giant comparative advantage that Binance had over Coinbase and Kraken, we'll talk more about Kraken later, they've got their own problems today, but the giant comparative advantage that Binance had over those those two other large exchanges was that they weren't doing KYC. Of course, you're going to get more users if you're not doing KYC. This is crypto. We don't love KYC. We're not like, hey, let me go do some KYC. What are you doing tonight? It's Friday night. Uh, I'm going to go do some KYC. I love it. I love providing all of my details to centralized entities. That doesn't happen in crypto. We hate KYC. But KYC is, I mean, the way we're hoping to change this with things like zero knowledge proofs. But the way it works now with these legacy institutions, pretty much the only way you can prevent money laundering by the bad guys, whoever you happen to think the bad guys are, the only way you can pre prevent bad guys from doing money laundering with legacy institutions is by having KYC. Binance did none of that. So of course they had more users. They got a lot more, they got a lot more use by people in jurisdictions like North America and Europe because they just didn't have any KYC. It's like, would you rather onboard to uh, something like a Coinbase where they're doing actual legit KYC and, you know, AML monitoring, or would you rather onboard to someplace like Binance back in the day where you only needed an email address? It was much easier, much better to onboard to Binance. So of course they got the greater flows of users. That was a devil's bargain, though, because now it's looking like CZ is going to do a bid. He's going to do some time in a fed federal penitentiary. 
And it probably would have been a lot more time if Binance wasn't paying the federal government $4.3 billion. I'm sure their their willingness to become the largest enforcement action in the history of the Treasury Department probably uh, that was probably negotiated. Probably a heavy, heavy factor in that was how much actual jail time CZ is going to do. And we don't know yet because he'll be sentenced at a later date. Today, he was just entering his guilty plea. And at a later date, we'll find out what his actual sentence is. And I saw all kinds of rumors online about what kind of prison sentence has been negotiated already, you know, and there's various factors in that. And a judge has to has to buy off on whatever he's negotiated with the, you know, the U.S. attorneys. So we'll see what what actually happens. But I would imagine they want their pound of flesh. I would imagine they will they want to see because there, this is a a large, this is a this is in there in according to what he pled guilty to. This is a large criminal infraction in terms of dollar amounts. Like this is a very very large financial crime that he's pled guilty to. So I would imagine the feds are going to want their pound of flesh. But when you're paying $4.3 billion to anybody for anything, you can buy your way out of a lot of things. So we'll see what kind of sentence CZ actually gets. Finally, you probably remember there was a big mystery surrounding Kraken. The mystery was Kraken was the subject of an SEC enforcement action over their staking program, and they paid a $30 million fine. And then it was sort of crickets in the crack it, Kraken direction. Uh, Coinbase got this big complaint. It was like, hey, you guys are transacting in securities, and you guys don't have any securities licenses. So here's us, the SEC, attacking you. Same thing for Binance. They got the same thing. And Kraken... It was just kind of like silent and everybody was like, there's no way Kraken is getting off this light. They pay a $30 million fine for staking and that's it. And, and yet they're transacting in many of the exact same coins. Today we got the answer. What, what was going on with this mystery? The SEC was just waiting for Kraken to take its turn. And here we see the actual complaint filed in the U.S. District Court for the Northern, Northern District of California, the San Francisco Division. And we see the defendant names here are not Kraken, but Payward Inc. and Payward Ventures Inc., which collectively do business as Kraken. I won't get into all the gory details because the complaint is essentially very similar to the Coinbase complaint, but I, I think it is important to point out that they're attacking the exact same coins, including Cardano. Cardano was mentioned 36 times in the 90 pages of this complaint, and the SEC is just you know, doing what they like to do. They straight up call Cardano the crypto asset, asset security. Pretty presumptuous, but this is what you do if you're the SEC and you're filing a complaint against an exchange. And of course, just like any other complaints, they have a whole section devoted to ADA. Here is the Kraken response. They say Kraken continues to fight for its mission and crypto innovation in the United States. And of course, as you'd expect, they say, we disagree with the SEC and the law is on our side. They describe the SEC's action as being this. Instead, the complaint makes a technical argument that Kraken's business requires special securities licenses to operate because the digital assets we support are really investment contracts. Of course, it's a reference to the Howey test. Howey test is largely cited when people are trying to determine if something is an investment contract. Kraken says this is incorrect as a matter of law, false as a matter of fact, and disastrous as a matter of policy. I think that is that last one is certainly true. They say the SEC already tried this theory and a court rejected it outright. And of course, they're referencing SEC versus Ripple. The federal court for the Southern District of New York disagreed, ruling the SEC failed entirely to satisfy the relevant legal test. The court held that the SEC's unprecedented legal theory was contrary to the economic reality of such transactions. The SEC's case against Kraken will fail too. And for the same reason, of course, this is what Kraken says. So, you know, take that for what it is. The complaint against Kraken alleges no fraud, no market manipulation, 
no customer losses due to hacking or compromised security, and no breaches of fiduciary duty. It includes big dollar amounts, but does not allege a single one of those dollars is missing or misused. No Ponzi scheme, no failure to maintain adequate reserves, and no failure to preserve the identity of client funds one-to-one. Indeed, none of these things would be true. They also point out that Congress is actually advancing bipartisan legislation to fix this regulation by enforcement jubilee that the SEC seems to be on. I hope that's true. I hope Kraken wins. I hope Coinbase wins. I hope Congress does pass bipartisan legislation to fix this problem. I hope every Every uh, court in the land agrees with the Southern District of New York as to the Howey analysis of these crypto tokens and coins being traded on exchanges and elsewhere. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. I think it's unlike it, what we've seen in the past in legal history is that it's unlikely that all courts will agree on something. And the SEC is kind of uh, using this shotgun strategy of attacking in different jurisdictions, you know, where things might have better chances. But I, I hope Kraken does well here. Tonight, though, I know that everybody at Kraken is probably sleeping a lot easier than say CZ has for the last, you know, last probably three years really, but especially like the last six months or 12 months since he's been in contact with the Department of Justice and Treasury. But then again, he had years and years of that comparative advantage where he wasn't doing KYC while Kraken and Coinbase and a lot of other exchanges were. So it's kind of this devil's bargain coming home to roost right now. I hope you're enjoying a great holiday four-day weekend for the people in North America that are celebrating this weekend. For everybody else, I hope you are getting ready for a great weekend of your own, and I'll talk to you soon.